Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Ebby with Ebby Reviews and this is going to be my review and recap for Cartel Crew Season 2, Episode 2. Um, when we last left off, people were acting like adults, but we're going to see how far that goes because I feel like we're going to backtrack. So let's jump into it and see what's going on. Okay, so um, Marie and Nicole meet at a restaurant and they're having a conversation about what's been going on with Nicole, why she hasn't heard from, my Marie hasn't heard from her and Nicole is telling her that, well, she and the basketball player guy are not, to, well, they're not together. She got, she, they stopped, they went the uh, opposite ways. They broke up. Um, so Maria, I mean, not Maria, but Nicole is talking about how she and the basketball player had broken up and she started dating a street man and she had gotten pregnant and then a family member of hers died and then she had a miscarriage and how it led her to this depression and, you know, she, I guess she was having suicidal thoughts and things of that nature. And so Marie being a friend, she's like, you can always call me, but I think you need to talk to somebody. Because you can get stuck there. And if you don't have anybody to talk, you might can't get yourself out of it. So she recommended that she have, um, that she go and speak to someone, which would have been my recommendation as well. So, okay. So Michael meets up with his business partner and best man, Magix. And they're going to get haircuts. And Magic is like, you need to get a prenup. So, um, Michael meets his best man, Jet Magix, at the barbershop. And, you know, they toast it up and stuff and they have a conversation. And Magix brings up the subject of a prenup saying that, you know, um, you need that. Because he's like, and and Michael is like, you're crazy. She's not going to want to marry me. Blase, bloom, blue, blue, blue. And he was like, well, you don't give up none of your businesses and stuff to some woman i'm uh, maybe i'm under a mistaken impression i thought marie has been with him this whole time and like she gave up her family for him and i mean she's been with him when he had nothing she was there when he got out of jail and helped him build himself to where he is today so i'm confused i'm confused Okay, so Betty and her mama sits down with the their their attorney, I guess, um, and she's trying to explain the law and how it works, and with this young man um, being underage as well, and like this is his first thing, and he there's a youthful offender law, and. Um, he's not being charged with murder, but negligent homicide because, you know, reasonably, that's a reasonable assumption that if you're playing with a gun, it could go off and someone could get hurt. Not like he meant to do it, but Betty and her mama don't feel that way. They feel like it was done on purpose, like she was murdered, um, and I don't know enough about the situation from the way they described it. It sounds like it was an accident. Not like he, not that he purposely went out there to murder her. Like that was the intent from the beginning of the evening was to kill her for some odd reason. Um, so they are in their feelings and they just because unfortunately, because you feel a way doesn't mean that the law is going to. Uh, acquiesce to how you're feeling about the situation. The law is the law, free from feelings and and biases and all of that stuff. The law is supposed to be is supposed to be that way. And the fact that um, they're not getting like murder charges pressed on this young man, they are really in their feelings, and they have a right to feel however they want to feel about this situation because their loved one is gone. But I have a, it, the way they're talking is like, they going to do something to this child. And I know they're speaking out of their hurt and their pain and their grief. 
And I don't know that they'll ever, their feelings will, in, in regards to this situation, this young man, I don't know that it will ever change. Um, but, yeah, th- listen, it's, they're not happy with the fact that he might get two years and then let go once he's turned 18, but still be like on probation for another three they feel like that doesn't it it does it feels it feels wrong it feels light too light a sentence for them for them losing their loved one um i'm trying to be very sensitive to their emotions and feelings about this situation i understand as a mama, how it feels to lose one of your children. I didn't lose my child to gun violence or anything like that, but I understand the loss of a child. And so I'm trying to be as sensitive as I can in regards to their feelings in this situation. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a tough, it's, it's a tough place to be in. It's very tough to be in that you want justice for what happened to your child, even though I think your emotions are maybe blinding you to what actually happened. Um, And it was an accident, but you I don't think their hearts or minds are ready to accept any scenario that assumes that it was just. <laughs> okay, so Michael, let me let me tell you how you should have framed that particular conversation. One, don't they go to the wedding planners to start planning the wedding. This first this fool said he wants mermaids and he wants live birds walking around and you're not getting any of those things. The fireworks, I could get with the fireworks. We could have a fireworks display at the end or at the reception or something. We could do fireworks. But all that other shit you was talking about, so we're not doing any of those things. And then while they're picking out like the theme of the wedding, Blase Bloom, this fool says, well, we need to get a prenup. He blindsided her. Here is my only issue. Um... Okay, so here's my issue. She says to this man, well, you already own half of my businesses. You have a 50% stake in her businesses. She asked for 1% of your business last year. And y'all had a whole shit fit about 1%. And you own 50% of her businesses. And now you're asking her for a prenup. If you wanted a prenup, This is how you should have framed it. You started this, but then you edged away from it. It should have been, babe, listen, I always want you to be protected. Regardless of what happens with us, we could fall down tomorrow. I want you to be always be you and your businesses and your hustle and your grind and what you're doing to be protected. And in that manner, I think we should have a prenup just in case. I want to make sure that you're protected. I want to make sure, you know, I can be a jackass. You know, I can be a jackass. I can be an asshole. So t- for your protection and for the protection of any children that we have or may have in this life t- to make sure that you're good. Um, if anything should happen to us as a unit, let's do this prenup and make sure that you're financially covered in case something should happen. Present it like it's insurance for her to make sure that she is good. And don't blindside her at your first meeting with your wedding planners. Jesus Christ. Men are stupid. Jesus Christ. She's so much better than me. Uh, Okay, so Cat meets Eddie. To meet his girlfriend because, of course, she's... So they go to meet at this restaurant. They get there, you know, I don't I don't know if they edited out Eddie actually giving them a formal introduction to each other. Oh, 
Cat, this is my girlfriend, such and such and such and such, such and such. This is Joaquin's mom. Cat, we didn't get that or that. We just got awkward silence. And then Cat goes into, you know, I wanted to meet you because, you know, you're going to be around my son. And she was like, and the girlfriend was very mature. And so was Cat. And they were having a good conversation. And then she was, they, this, I guess the discussion turned to Eddie and I f it's the microaggressions in this conversation. Like he was pushing, he wanted to push her, but she was able to rein it back in because the, oh, you only know the old me. You know, I needed somebody who didn't, who wasn't, who didn't grow up the way we did, who's different from us. Um, you know, I'm doing all the things that I did in this relationship that I didn't do. I'm improving those things um, in our relationship from previous relationships to this one to make it better. All of those were darts thrown at Kat to get her to blow up. And he knows what to do. And the fact that she was she was this close. Good on you, cat. Because I maybe would have came across the fucking table. Because he, listen. No woman wants to see all the effort that they put into a nigga. And then he turn around and all the changes, the, the upgrades and effort that you wanted him to display with you. He gets out of a relationship with you and then he does everything that you wanted him to do with you with another bitch. That's not, that ain't, that ain't it. That'll make you kill somebody, honestly. And he tried it. He did. He did. He absolutely tried it. Okay, so... Y'all remember me last week saying that this there's something with this Stephanie girl that just don't sit right in my spirit. She don't sizzle right in my spirit. She doing she stay doing the damn most in regards to cat. I understand that that's your best friend and all that stuff, but you are overstepping boundaries and you doing entirely too much. She's at it again. So we're at Marie's in bridal situation where she invites the girls to be bridesmaids and she gets them to try on dresses because she's like you won't be dressing like whores at my wedding <laughs> let's just be very honest i've seen how you dress and i'm not leaving it up to y'all so let's get these dresses under control so while the ladies are trying on dresses you know they're they're tag teaming in and out on different dresses so diana is sitting there minding her own business and here comes stephanie and she was like oh you wanted to talk to me and she was like, yeah, kind of, sort of. And then she goes into this, why are you hanging out with Eddie? What's your relationship with him? Didn't you see what he did to Cat Blasi Bloom, blue to blue? Why didn't you say fuck you and didn't stop talking to her? Diana said, I'm not hanging out with him. Yes, I have a relationship because I had a relationship with both of them. What happened is, is that I've had different events and I invited the entire group, but he's the only one that's been showing up to the events. So when you see social media you see him there because he's the only one that's showing up for the events that i've invited everyone to if you wanted to see me sitting at the pool the casino table with y'all then y'all should have showed your asses up to the event when i invited you and so she's hollering and screaming and rah 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 with this woman about oh you should have did this you should have did that if you call yourself her friend blah bloom blue blue ooh, 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 ooh. girl you're doing a lot you doing a lot. You doing a whole, whole lot. And you overstepping boundaries again. Kat didn't have an issue with it. Kat hasn't spoken to it. I'm sure she's seen it just like everybody else has seen it. If she don't have a problem, why do you have an issue? Why are you doing all the money? Okay, so we come back from the fighting. Cat is like, really, there's really nothing to argue about. 
I don't have an issue. Listen, I just know that the day that you break up with your man is the day that I stop hanging out with your man. But that's just me. You do whatever. So we th and Marie was like, that's cute with the dresses because you, you never know. This might not even happen. Everybody's like, girl, what? And she was like, he asked me for a prenup. And then they, all of them are like, what? He asked you for a prenup. And then it was like, after you, you've been with him for years, y'all have a kid. Apparently, while she was pregnant, she was working two jobs so that he could build up his business. And she was taking care of home while he was out there trying to build up his business. And now the business that you help support and help him build, he wants a prenup to protect you from. He wouldn't even give you 2% of that company. And yet he owns 50%. Girl, you... You lost in the salt. Like, this doesn't even make any fucking sense. And they look at her like her. Like, she's stupid. And then Diana says, you're weak. She was like, this is what you do. You look at the papers and what the prenup says and how what how it because they're talking about clauses about if he cheats, you get everything. And, you know, you need to protect your businesses. And it was like, sure, you already almost have. So, listen. Um, she said to her, which is very smart, look at the papers and whatever, however it breaks down what the prenup is supposed to protect you and give you and all that stuff will actually tell you how he really feels about you. And she ain't spoke nothing but a word. Child, so she get home, she drunk and angry and he like, oh, you're so cute. You've been drinking all day. You've had a good day. And she was like, motherfucker, where's the prenup? And that's, and that's how it went on. And that's how the episode ended. Like, this was a doozy. It's a lot. I don't know if I could continue to take the emotional toll of Betty and her mama. It's a lot. Eddie and his passive-aggressive narcissistic tendencies is giving me a migraine. Michael being stupid. Like, it's it's a whole lot. And, ooh, child, we'll see what happens. Please, sirs and ma'ams, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a kid, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.